All right, guys, so here's what we're gonna do today. We're gonna go over in a shared email account how to send it to people in a round robin sort of way um, through Microsoft 365. We're gonna use Power Automate and SharePoint, and I'm gonna walk you through all the steps. This is really useful, like let's say in a tech support company, you're getting tickets in and customer requests, and you want those requests to automatically be assigned to somebody or sent to their email right when the email comes in. So what this function will do is it'll go through, it'll send that email out to them so they can get working on that task right away. So let's go ahead and hop over. I'm gonna start explaining how to do that. We're gonna go through SharePoint and Power Automate. So let's go do that. And as we start to jump in, I do want to remind you guys, we are consultants. So if you do have any questions and you want to reach out to us, you can reach out to us at support at nexttechconsultants.com. You can also find us on all the social media platforms at Next Tech NT. We have Twitter, Facebook, Instagram. So what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and hop over to the computer now. We're going to start in Power Automate and kind of start building our script. Um, I'm going to take you to a few other places while we are there, but let's go through this step by step. All right. So the first place we're going, it's Power Automate automate.microsoft.com and it'll take you here it'll make you log in and you'll come to this screen uh, so we're going to click on new flow and it's going to be an automated cloud flow uh, we can call this round robin email video because I think I have another one in there uh, and then our trigger our first trigger is a sh we're going to search for shared mailbox so when an email arrives in a shared mailbox, version two, this is important, version two. So we're gonna click that and click create. All right, so what it does is it says, hey, which mailbox? So we're gonna say support because that is a shared mailbox that we have in our account. And obviously folder inbox, cause that's when emails come in. Uh, and then here's where it becomes a bit more powerful for so advanced options. You can say, hey, is it to any certain person which is already to the mailbox? Uh, is there CC'd or is anything else on here? Is it from a certain person? For us, since we're doing it for a mailbox that we just want everything to forward, uh, we're not gonna have any filters. But if it's for you and it says like specific quotes or I only want invoices, you can filter by the subject, which that comes really powerful. You can say, hey, filter and say, if this is a quoting email, say quote. If it's something that came from an automated system that generates a, a quote, like email to you from your website, make sure you have something in the fil in the subject that you can filter from and put that in here. Um, so once you have all those versions set up, there is one more step we're gonna do before we move on from this spot. We're gonna go into settings and we're gonna scroll down to concurrency control and we're gonna turn that on. And we really only want one to process at a time because what could happen in an unlikely scenario, but it could happen, is you get multiple emails in at a time, and then it skips over somebody in the round robin. So we want one to process, finish, and then process the next one. So make sure you click that so you don't skip over anybody in the round robin email. Then go ahead and click done there. And we're gonna add a new step now. So this new step is gonna be called get item. So we're gonna get item from SharePoint. And in here, we're actually gonna just go to our communication site, which this is your dot on Microsoft domain. So whatever your whatever your domain is before the dot on Microsoft.com, it's that dot SharePoint.com if you need to go to it. So I'm gonna click communication site. Uh, and also, if you don't know what your dot on Microsoft.com account is, you can go into the admin console, click on settings and click on domains and you'll find it in there. There should be a picture that pops up over here That'll show you. So once you you collect this SharePoint site, but we do have to also create something in that SharePoint site for you to pull from. So this is gonna be your communication site. We're going to create a new list and we're gonna call this list, it's gonna be a blank list and we're gonna call this list um, contact or Let's call it round robin emails and go ahead and click create. We do want it to show so we can see it easily. And round robin emails in here. We want the title be the name and we're going to add a column. It's going to just going to be a single line of text and we're going to call the column email. And this is where you're going to add your emails and you're going to filter through them. So we're going to say a new item 
we're gonna say we're gonna say me and Josiah at consultants.com. We're gonna save that. The next thing we're gonna do is we're all now gonna say we're gonna add one more person. So it is around Robin. You can see it go through. We're gonna add Sandra and we're gonna put her email in there and we're gonna save. And you'll see here now we have two emails that it will filter through and go back and forth. For the example of this video, that's all I need, but you can add as many as you would like. So now we're gonna actually go back to our communication site and we're gonna do another list. We're gonna add a blank list. We're gonna call this our counter round robin. And you can call this whatever you want. Just You just have to remember what it is when you're pulling it from your list. So what I like to do is I like to add a new column. It's actually gonna be a number and we're gonna call this counter and say save. So now we're gonna add new. The title is gonna be counter. It's gonna be what our main counter is. And we're actually just gonna start it at one and click save. Now that we have our emails created in our SharePoint site, we can come back here and we can actually go in and we can click the round robin emails that we just created. So that will now pull those two emails from the list and get them in here. If it doesn't show up for you, make sure you save and then refresh the page because if you refresh it without saving, it will delete it and you'll have to recreate everything at that point. So now that we've saved, I actually do like to rename this to make sure I know what it is. So this is email list. So this, so now I know that this is the email list. So click new step. And so now that we've gotten our emails, we need to get that counter to make sure that we get the right email every time this runs. So get counter, which is actually going to be another get item. And we're going to say uh, communication site. And we're going to, this time we're going to choose the counter round Robin. And that ID is going to be one because the ID is the only thing in there is that counter. And that's what ID is. Just a note, if you do delete that item and re-add it, it does move it to ID two. So make sure that if you did delete it, make sure it's the right ID. And you'll see that when you're going through the other steps. So go ahead and click new step now that we have our get item there. Let's rename this to say get counter. So now what we need to do is we need to initialize it's initialize a variable. So our variable in this case is going to be team members. And this basically what this does is it initializes a variable so we can put all of our emails into this list. So we're going to click a new step and we're going to initialize our next variable, which is going to be our counter. So initialize another variable. And this one's just going to be called counter. So we're going to rename this to initial initialize team member. We're going to rename this to initialize counter and renaming all of these just helps you know what the flow is and what's going on as you're pulling variables later. So next we're going to initialize another variable, which is going to be called our next counter. And this is important because we do need to, once we get the counter, we do need to update that number and push it back to the SharePoint site. So this is when that becomes really important. And this is going to be an integer, which reminded me I didn't change this to integer either. So your counter and your variable are both integers. Your team member is an array. And we're going to say rename initialized next counter. We're going to go ahead and save real quick. And guys, I almost missed this. This is also really important. We do want to say we want to initialize an int of the get counter counter. So then we click OK. And then we're going to do a new step. And this one is a little bit different. This one is a, called apply to each. And it's kind of like a for loop. Um, and what you're going to do is you're going to go through. And what it's going to do is it's going to go through the value of your email list. So we're going to pull in email list. So we're going to go down to the member. The one we pulled is our email list. So we got to find email list in this spot, email list, and we're going to click value. And then we're going to add an action. And that action is going to be append to array, append to array variable. And the name is going to be team members, the array variable we put up here of team members. So what we're going to append is we get for each value, we're going to take that 
in a for loop for each value and we're going to put email into this team member list and that's what we need so now what we've got is we've got our email list we got our counter we got our variables set up and then now what we've done is we've taken the email list that we pulled and put it into our team members variable so we're going to go ahead and save again and the next step is going to be kind of where we work with the counter to make sure we're pulling the right email address every time so we need in order to do that we have to add a condition And the condition is if the counter is greater than or equal to, and this is gonna be a expression, and what expression we're looking for is called length. The length, and if it didn't pull up there, you can also scroll down and click length here. And we're gonna look up an expression, and that expression is called length. So if you go down to collection, it's length, or you can type in length and then put the parentheses. And then we go back to our dynamic content. At, at, when we're clicked in the parentheses, we go back to our dynamic content and we click on team members and it puts in variables team members. So it's how many emails have we put into the length of variable team members? And we click OK. And if our counter is greater than or equal to that length, if it's true, then we need to do that action so that if it's greater than or equal, it's going to go over here. And it's going to say yes. And we're going to then set variable. And the one we're going to set now is our next counter. And we're going to make it zero because we're going to bring that number back to zero. Because when you're talking about an array item for when you're looking at length, the count always starts at zero. So your item number one is item zero. And then we're going to add an action. And what we need to do is now is we need to update item in SharePoint. So now what we need to do is we need to get the item again, our communication site of counter route Robin. The ID is one, the title, we're actually going to scroll down to our get counter and just leave it the same title. So we don't ever update it. It is required. So we do have to put the title in and then the counter is going to go to one because now we've set next counter to zero and our next one needs to be number one. So we're going to add another action. So if it, if this meets it, it's going to do this. If it doesn't meet the parameters, it's going to come over here and we need to set variable and it's set variable two is what it automatically names to. And we're going to name the next counter. Now we're going to set the value to be what the counter is, because if it's not greater than or equal to, it means that it can use that value and move into the next steps. So then we can add another action. And what we need to do here is a little bit different than up. We do, are still updating our counter, but we have to use a little bit of math when we do it. So we say update item is what we're looking for. And we're going to click on communication site. We're going to say round robin counter. And we're going to say the title is going to do the same thing. It's going to stay the same as title ID is one title is going to be get counter title but our counter at this point we're going to use an expression we're going to say add so what we're going to put in this expression is going to be an add expression i'm actually going to have it po show up in the video here but it, what it's going to say is add and then in parentheses outputs new parentheses get counter question mark brackets body counter comma one so what this is doing is it's getting the outputs of get counter. So what is get counter? How is it getting it? So it gets the counter and then it takes the body of counter and says, now add one to it. So that's how you make sure that it increases one value. And then we click, okay. It'll be in the description. If you can't see it, if you didn't catch that, you can get it later. So at this point we're going to click save because we've done a bit of work since we saved and we're going to move on to the next steps. We're going to click new step here. And we're going to do a new step. It's called, we're going to initialize our final variable and our final variable is going to be called final email. And we're going to make this a string in the string and our value. It's going to be another expression in this variable. I'm going to paste in again and I'll explain it to you really quick. Um, and it's going to show up here in the screen. So if you can't see it right here, that's okay. It's variables team member. And so it's pulling the variables team members, all the emails we have. And then it's saying question mark 
and then in brackets variables next counter so what it's doing is saying okay i'm getting the value of my next counter and that's the one that i'm taking so remember if count next counter is at zero that means it's going to be zero and if the next counter is at one then it's going to pull the second email in the list so that is why we're using the next counter and we're pulling our team members into that list with just their emails and we're putting it in and then we're going to click OK here and we're going to click new step and what this new step is is we're going to actually forward an email and it's also really important here that we use version two also we did get a we did do that when we're in the shared mailbox but also in here it's really important forward email version two so we're going to take the message ID from our original message, which if we scroll down, we have our original message and we're going to take the message ID and we're going to put that in there. Two is going to be our variable final email and original mailbox address. This is really important. This is like where it's coming from. So it needs to come from the same email account as you. So support at nexttechconsultants.com as that needs to be the same as this up here and then go ahead and click save and that's how it works so now what i'm going to do is i'm going to go ahead and go into my email i'm going to send an email in and see if i get it in my personal email so once you're done we do want to run our test you can see here that it does check everything we can see that the email did come in it went to our email list and we got our email list we got our counter and then we go down, we initialize our team member. We got our counter and we set it to the value. We do initialize our next counter, apply to each. We went in and kind of got our list in there. You can see there was two emails, like I put two emails in there in my communication site. And then expression was true, it was greater than, so I went back to set variable zero. And you can see the final email ended up being me. And then it forwarded the email out to me. So now if I click edit and I test it again with the same record we're going to click test and it was pretty quick but if we go down to this variable here you can see that the email is now the next person so it automatically said oh we've already emailed to josiah so now let's email over to sandra all right so that's how you set up a round robin email list in microsoft 365. what's great about this is included already in your microsoft 365 subscription so you don't have to pay any extra the main thing when you're creating this is just to make sure that you're using an account that has access to that share mailbox or there will be errors so to re go through the steps really quick first we started our power automate script and we added the trigger to be a shared mailbox then we went into our communication site and we created our two lists that we needed we did our round robin email list and we add our emails there second we created the counter list and we added the counter in there title counter and the counter variable to be set as zero or one, wherever you want to set it. Then we went back to our Power Automate and we started doing all the steps. So we did our email list, we got that, we got our counter, we initialized our variables, moved our emails into our team member list and went through the conditions to make sure we email the right email, got the email and then forwarded it out. So that's how it works if you have any questions remember put it in the comments below i'm happy to answer any questions and if anything comes up we are consultants again so please do reach out to us if you have any issues at support at next and if you're still here give this video a like because you know if you stuck around this long you like it so i appreciate it you guys coming in and i look forward to talking to you guys next time thank you so much